Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15 verse 13. This was exactly what the great saint Maximilian Kolbe did for his fellow brethren. As I'll soon show you, he dedicated his life for God and for the people, and in the end, he died for them as well. This is the life of Maximilian Kolbe. Born on the 8th of January 1894 in Poland, Maximilian was an obedient child but also had a very mischievous and wild way about him. One day, around the age of 12, this mischievous side caused his mother great anxiety and she questioned what would become of him. Maximilian, he did not know. So he went to our Blessed Lady and prayed to her, asking her the same question. There, he had a mystical experience where he saw Our Lady standing before him, holding two crowns. A white one for purity and a red one for martyrdom. Our Lady asked if he would choose one. He reached out his hands and accepted both. One year after this, he joined a minor seminary along with his brother, where he was extremely interested in knowledge, physics, astronomy, etc. By the age of 21, he had earned his first doctorate in philosophy, and at age 23, he had taken his first steps in becoming an apostolate. It was at this point where Kobe, along with six others, formed the group the Knights of the Immaculata aka the Knights of the Virgin Mary. This group had a goal to pray for sinners and to combat hostility which was growing towards the Catholic faith. It was this group where they started printing their own magazine about the truth and about the Catholic faith. The magazine was called the Knights of the Immaculata. This magazine got so popular amongst the people that it reached 750,000 issues monthly. They also released another paper, which was called The Little Daily, which reached 225,000 issues on Sunday. The Knights of the Immaculata community under Colby had gotten so popular that they built their own seminary, novitiate, hospital, electric plant, and airport, housing nearly 1,000 friars. They were certainly doing their job of combating the hatred to the Catholic Church and speaking the truth. But Colby knew they could still do more, so he went to Japan with four other friars and started publishing their magazine in Japanese. This magazine reached circulation of 65,000. He also established a second Franciscan community in Japan as well. Kobe, with his Franciscan brothers, had built an empire in service of God through the Blessed Virgin Mary. But on the 1st of September 1939, Poland was invaded by Nazi Germany. Kobe knew that the monastery would be seized and he sent most of his friars home, but he stayed. Kobe then got imprisoned and released, but after being released, they seized him for good and he was taken to the Auschwitz concentration camp. He was prisoner number 16,670. Now, at Auschwitz, priests were often signalled out for the worst work, the likes of carrying corpses to crematoriums and other harsh, intense jobs. Colby was often beaten and dogs were set upon him. But instead of hating or crying, he prayed for the guards that beat him. At the camp, Colby often heard people's confessions instead of sleeping himself and he would celebrate mass when he could if someone smuggled in bread or wine. He also would share the scarce amount of food that was rationed to him and he would always let people go first for the food instead of fighting for the rations like everyone else did. What he would tell the other prisoners was the way to glory was through the cross and he would soon show truly how much he meant this to the core of his being. Because one of the prisoners in his camp had escaped. For punishment, 10 men were randomly selected to the starvation chamber in block 13. One man out of the 10, Francis Gechownesvik, pleaded with the guard, I have a wife and children. The guard, he did not care. Then the unthinkable happened. 
prisoner number 16,670 stepped forward, who had not been randomly selected. The guard yelled, What do you want, you Polish dog? Colby said, I will take this man's place. The guard yelled, Why? Colby said, I'm an old man and good for nothing. The guard laughed and let Colby take the man's place to die a slow and hope-crushing death. Colby and the nine other men were stripped naked and put in a bunker. For 14 days, the prisoners died of thirst and starvation. But the weird thing was, instead of the usual expected weeping and screaming and agony, there were the singing of hymns, the sound of prayer, the rosary, and confessions being made to Colby. Finally, it came time for another batch of prisoners to be put in the bunker, and the guards surprisingly found Colby still alive, fully conscious, now whispering his prayers. In the end, they had to murder Colby with a lethal injection of carbolic acid to finally put him to death. Saint Maximilian Colby, we pray that you give us the courage each day to take up our own cross, to fight for the good of Jesus, so that we too may one day go to heaven. Saint Maximilian Colby, pray for us.